Consider you're building two different versions of email campaigns to increase sales. How do you determine which version of the campaigns will lead to higher sales and what are the steps to do so? Okay, thank you so much for being here with us today, Tyler. Uh, can you quickly introduce yourself for our viewers? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Tyler Shang. I'm a uh, senior data science manager at Tinder, uh, the dating app. So uh, I'm focusing on product analytics and um, I would say I've been working for a while and I have my own team. So I have experience of um, you know, both being interviewed and interviewing others. So hopefully, hopefully okay. I can be helpful. Our question today is, consider you're building two different versions of email campaigns to increase sales. How do you determine which version of the campaigns will lead to higher sales and what are the steps to do so? Yes. So the question is how to evaluate the 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 two campaigns we're building right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so to evaluate the product success i would recommend run a uh, run an experiment or a b testing to measure the effectiveness of the mm -hmm. campaigns and see which one is a winner uh -huh. um i recommend a b testing because it is the only scientific approach to make causal conclusions. And the key component of A-B testing is randomization, mm -hmm. which you know, we're going run, to randomly assign, put our customers into both control and treatment, means that's two different versions of the campaigns, um, in order to compare or build a apple-to-apple -apple comparison and you know, to make sure that the difference from the results is only because of the content being different. Uh, okay. So, because everything else staying stable or staying the same because of randomization. Um, right. To so the, that's what yeah. you meant mm -hmm. by causal, right? Like we know that it's causal yeah. because you're only letting one variable change. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So for the steps to run this A/B testing, I would start from. Uh, communicating with stakeholders to decide, to determine the product success, because which will help us to uh, figure out our, uh, the, the success metrics to be able to quanti uh, quanti quantitatively evaluate the metric, the, the lift. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine, I would, I would assume that, for example, in this case, I would assume uh, the success, the, or the business goal is uh, higher revenue. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would see like overall like a, one of the key metrics would definitely be going to be the like total uh, total revenue or sales for example. Okay. And I would also want to figure out the target lift, like it's a success because success is relative to criteria, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a lift higher than um, three percent or one percent considered as a success. For example, that probably re uh, that's that's. That's probably relevant to the stakeholder because um, that's you no know, that needs context of costs and mm -hmm. the goal maybe have needs to reach certain KPI. So the stakeholder should be able to figure out, um, let's say, the success is three uh, percent on the on, on three percent. Like if the variant B is three percent higher on sales than the, the A, then that's a success. That means we should completely globally launch it the version B instead, that will give us 3% higher revenue. Okay. And um, so yeah. by lift then you meant just like an increase in the target metric, right? Yeah. That's a relative to the control group or the variant mm -hmm. A means that let's say the, uh, the average, the metric should be average sales. Then, you know, like, uh, um, the, the lift calculation will be the relatively difference for this metric in group A, uh, group B versus group A. Um, so then after, after figuring, figuring out the, the, the goal, I will, um, you know, I would want to figure out or formulate the hypothesis. Ideally, um, you know, I, I would want to figure, we should start from figuring out hypothesis first and then decide, you know, decide based on hypothesis, decide what are the variants, how many variants we need, what exactly variants we need in order to get the exactly uh, conclusion we want. Uh, but okay. uh, I would definitely have uh, want to see a hypothesis. For like, let's see, for example, uh, the, the difference in B in the, in, the, in, the, in the variant group, let's see maybe 
the difference is that it it's simpler. It means that it has it has less options mm-hmm. in the email campaign B. So that our hypothesis is that when we offer less options, then converter people the, the customers will have uh, will it will be easier for customers to make decisions so that hence conversion rate is higher. Let's see that's hypothesis. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I would consider that as a valid hypothesis. Um, and then after that, I would, uh, 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 next step is I would want to decide on the, on the task group and allocation it means that, for example, this is clear, right? Like we're going to have control because we have two email campaigns. So one of them is control, one of them is treatment. And allocation means that usually, uh, usually the, the, in order to achieve the highest power, uh, we do 50 and 50. So it's going to be 50 control and 50 treatment. The treatment mm-hmm. is a new new email campaign design that we want to know how, how much effective, how much higher effectiveness it is compared to the version A. Uh, and obviously we'd want to, in order to decide how we're going to send, who we're going to send to, we'd want to randomly assign our customers into mm-hmm. control and treatment. Um, after that, uh, I would want to figure out, we ha- we're going to have to figure out where to run the test and run for how long. That's about the implementation, yeah.